speak about the collection of Lotter Castle with my bad English for hours, but unfortunately I have not the time, so uh, let me just give you a fast overview of the formation of this collection and the social and <laughs> the cultural factor that played a role in the gathering of this uh, very neglected collection <coughs> of uh, antiquities, which is now unfortunately, unfortunately dismembered. Well, uh, Sir William Lauter uh, started to gather <coughs> um, antiquities uh, in, uh, for, in 1842 for about 30 years until his death, for exactly 30 years, and uh, <coughs> the, uh, also uh, adding two galleries for, with the purpose to host the collection to his manor of Lauter Castle in Cambria. West, former Westmoreland. Um, the collection uh, was formed for, of about 120 pieces of Egyptian, uh, Greek, Etruscan, uh, Romano British, and mostly Roman <coughs> anti, uh, origin. Uh, mainly because of its dispersion, uh, this collection is one of the less investigated among those formed in 19th century Britain. Uh, also, because these are, those are two. Uh, the, a view of the two galleries from the inside, with the most prominent statues exposed in this part. <clears throat> also because of this very peripheral position in Britain, uh, this is a map of the uh, rail network of England, and the uh, arrow points to Lothar Castle. Also the, the, the reports from Victorian travelers, travelers are very scarce and very inaccurate. <laughs> uh, Actually, there are not so much um, information. The source of the, on the collection are very scarce. Uh, the most complete work on it is uh, in Adolf Michaelis' Ancient Marble of Great Britain. I suppose everybody here now this publication, and, and now how big is it? And so the, the space below the collection is very small. Just 10 pages where about 130 <coughs> objects are very briefly described, uh, in most cases just uh, mention it. Uh, the other <coughs> reports are very uh, inaccurate from the archaeological point of view, uh, except for this one, published in 1928 by Paul Arm and uh, Walter Amelung in Photographische uh, Einzelaufnahmen Antiker Skulpturen. I hope to translate uh, it well. Um, <coughs> Well, uh, as a long, along as a, a not so accurate archaeological description of the object, there are uh, uh, 33, a set of 33 photographs that in some cases are the only, <coughs> the only uh, testify of the object on the collection. Uh, so the collection was formed in um, four great moments, uh, basically. Uh, some of the greatest sales uh, of Keep this collection of Britain, uh, of, of Victorian Britain, the Shago, the Stone, the Basperov, and the Hartford collection, and there was this memory in the second half of the 20th century. <clears throat> the, the objects are now scattered all over the world in different collections. Let's see oh, the first acquisition, which were made at the sale of the Anson collection of Shadgrove. Uh, there were, uh, just to give an overview of, of the pieces of the collection, there were uh, a small statue of Asclepius of uh, early Antony period and a statue of Dionysus of the Wolverine type, but restored and identified as Adonis by Joseph Nolegans. This is a very common uh, issue in um, <coughs> uh, pieces restored in the uh, 18th century, like this one. Uh, and this is very common in. Um, in the, uh, in the collection of the castle to find pieces misidentified or restored by, uh, as something else. The differences between those two statues are very evident and it doesn't seem, the, uh, the, it doesn't, we cannot see um, an archaeological intent uh, behind this acquisition. There are probably fancy uh, uh, objects by, by the earl without an, uh, any real archaeological intent. Later, William Lauter participated to one of the great so, uh, um, stately home sale of the uh, 19th century in Britain, the sale of Stowe, Stowe House of the Marquis of Buckingham, where he bought a lot of beautiful large statues 
sarcophagi, and funerary art, Roman relief, mostly or mostly Roman uh, antiquities. Uh, like for example, this beautiful statue of Sibylle. How do you pronounce it in, in English? Well, Cibele, and uh, the statue which is now at the Getty Museum in Los Angeles, and the statue of Livia, uh, which was restored by Gavin Hamilton in, in his Roman laboratory as uh, Agrippina, as the Muse of History, uh, which is now at the um, Antique Museum in Basel, in Switzerland. And for example, the statues of Artemis. Uh, which was restored by Bartolomeo Cavacippi under the direction of Matthew Breckingham, uh, and it was very different when uh, Joachim Winkelmann, uh, as this drawing by Bernardino Cifferi testified, uh, saw it in Palazzo Spada, and it was identified as Venus, and it is probably Venus also because of the Cintos. Um, <clears throat> well, this is a very common issue in Lothar Castle. This is another modern pastiche made by two statues, uh, made by Kevin Hamilton in, in his Roman laboratory. Uh, a, a torso of Tessian marble, a copy of the Praxiteles uh, Clidiana uh, Venus, Aphrodite, uh, which was unearthed in uh, 1777 <coughs> near the area of the Circus of Nero, uh, while demolishing the church of Santa Maria della Febre, near northern the Vatican nowadays. And, um, mixed uh, with uh, the peplum and the idria from another copy, another ancient copy of the same statue. Uh, well, while the torso is of Tazian marble, the idria is of pentelic, so there is the white and yellowish contrast that make this uh, pastiche more evident. Uh, also, the smallest pieces of the collection uh, were not exempt for this restoration. For example, this uh, double arm is uh, uh, for the half, and, uh, a reconstruction and anastylosis. Uh, they had uh, probably um, uh, Giovan Battista Piganesi added these uh, <coughs> bases with Asker and Chimation, where um, um, Roman arts had no bases, of course, and the lid is obviously not uh, belonging to the urn. There were, those are other examples of funerary art in the collection an Egyptian sarcophagus, some uh, Hellenistic stele for Smyrna and for Sisychus, and a terracotta urn. A Tuscan terracotta urn from Volterra, no, from Cusi, sorry. <clears throat> uh, of course, there were also some true masterpieces in the collection of that castle, accidentally come in the hand of uh, William Lothar, like this uh, funeral relief from, uh, one, from a stele, from one of the precincts of uh, the Demos of Akarne, and at the beginning of the uh, 19th century by the Earl of Guilford, who we don't know how it's come to Lothar Castle. It is a, a real masterpiece of, of late classical Greek sculpture and is now uh, preserved in the Metropolitan Museum in New York. Oh, another set of, uh, of objects in the collection was uh, the one formed by the so called na native antiquities, uh, objects of Romano British origin that they are inherited. Uh, not by each choice, but, but um, because they were found in a um, land of his own, uh, 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 land of it, owned by him, and uh, or uh, or uh, just uh, were present in a, you know that collection uh, that he inherited, uh, except for a sect coming from the uh, from the village of Kirbito, which was the collection of. Um, a banker, John Crosby from King Kirbitor, and it was sold uh, by his family after his death. Some of those pieces are exposed at the British Museum. Actually, all uh, belonging to the British Museum, but this uh, smiling lion and this funeral is there. Also, that one are exposed in the, the British Museum now. Um, well, so we have an example composed by a very, a very heterogeneous uh, set, uh, by very heterogeneous sets of objects. Also, modern post medieval sculptures, this magical object uh, which was believed to be the Olympian meta, uh, which of course is not, but it's probably a Roman meta because the Greek news were slightly different. Uh, and uh, so there were also a lot of inscribed love, I didn't mention them, which were kept in another part of the, of the castle. Um, and it Seems like William Lothar never planned this collection. Actually, he probably just buy, bought a lot of objects, fancy objects, 
uh, to carry on a tradition and self-represent himself like his precursors. Actually, he was not a very cultured man, and we can see it also because, for example, there is this series of the statues of the Caesars, uh, the Svetonian 12 Caesars, it, it is complete, but some of them are clearly modern, and some of them, for example, there are two uh, Vitellio. Vitellio appeared two times, and one of the time is identified as um, um, Otto, uh, and the other time as Nero, because Nero is called Vitellius. Also, it's not Vitellius, but it's the Vitellius Grimani, which is, uh, so it's a copy of uh, a statue of uh, <coughs> another period, as we know. Uh, and so, uh, is, it seems he was just pursuing uh, the search of beauty in a vague path with a very romantic spirit, but something of the age of the dilettante was surviving in this aesthetic, in the aesthetics of the collection. Why? Well, mm, since the beginning of the 19th century, the, market, the European market of antiquities was likely that was radically changed especially speaking from Rome to the British Islands. Mostly because, of, at the beginning, for the French occupation of Rome. Then, because of the Editto Doria Panfili, also known as uh, Chirograph of Fea, which is a legal measurement by the Papal State to uh, limit and control the exportation of antiquities, any kind of antiquities, from coins, gems, to statues or sarcophagi. They are reinforced. Uh, almost 20 years later, with the uh, Editto Pacca, which it is very interesting, prohibit also the restoration the, of antiquities. So the, those misinterpretations were uh, perceived in the status in the papal state as a, a damage for the for the, the knowledge, the, the conception of the, concept, the the perception of antiquity. Well, but. They are in Britain, people was very rich and they want to buy antiquities. So they start to buy antiquities from they were present in Britain. Uh, this memory the collection uh, formed during the previous the previous century, century. Uh, the consequences were that the, the antiquities that were imported in Georgian era to Great Britain remained stayed in the United Kingdom, and the perception the perception of antiquities uh, was filtered uh, by the taste of the previous century, mostly by the hands of those guys, so Kevin Hamilton, Bartolomeo Capacetti, Thomas Jenkins, John Battista Piranesi, Matthew Brevington, Brettingham, and Joseph Nolakens, which worked on, on <laughs> the most of the reworked statues which were present in Lothar Castle uh, in the collection of the Roslonis of London. So, at the final twilight of the great British season of collecting antiquities, we had this conflict between, from one side, <coughs> these uh, uh, classicistic uh, uh, tendencies of uh, uh, antiquarian research, uh, typical of the age of, of the dilettanti, the society of dilettanti, and from another side, the romantic search of beauty in a, in a bad past. <coughs> I think that uh, the, sh the frame of Lothar Castle, the architect, this neo-Gothic architecture designed by Robert Smirk, with this collection of classical antiquity inside, will represent this uh, cultural tension, which is, of course, evident also in other aspects of uh, British culture of Victorian era, like, for example, I'm thinking of, of the lace of ancient Rome by Livington Macaulay, or uh, the, the, some, the, picture, the paintings of some pre-Raphaelites, like, like Lawrence Almatadima and stuff like this. But there was another contrast, I think, and it is very important in the Lothar collection, which is between, uh, the, the, which is generated by the cohabitation in the same um, space of evenimental, uh, 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 artifacts, if I can uh, borrow this term, uh, so, um, Object that uh, they were linked to the macro history and uh, local monuments. Uh, and it, it, is very, it is quite strange seeing so early an interest in, uh, in uh, Romano British antiquity, uh, mostly because it was the, the distinctive it, class interest of the, the, the middle class 
horizon with the um, with the industrial revolution and in fact there was not this interest in Lothar Castle but uh, by chance uh, it was one of the first collection of local antiquities built with the only um, aim of preservation not to self represent uh, uh, them uh, not with uh, intent of self representation um, thing like this well, I uh, want to say to you thank you with this picture of Lazar Castle a few years ago with these uh, uh, figures in the, in the sort of facade and uh, some verse from a poem from William Walsworth which dedicated to William Lothar in 1854 which will represent the end of this place uh, after that uh, the fifth head of Lonze, Hugh Ceci, uh, spent uh, the money and they had to sell the collection which is now scattered all over the world uh, but literally all over the world from Brazil to my hometown uh, to Australia too uh, so thank you <laughs>